All right, Lee Fraser with Mr. Robottom. Um, in the next series of Drivers uh, uh, Mental uh, Wellbeing. Hello, Dan. Hi, Emily. How are you? All good? All good to send, thank you. Um, as, as we're fans see you and all the drivers as these happy chappies going, just turning up at a weekend, hopping in a car, having fun driving around a track, and uh, and going back home again. Um, surely it can't be that good, can it? Uh, well, look, you know, at the end of the day, I think we're all here because we want to be here. That's the first thing, you know, and and. and it's a very difficult job to be here because it's it's not just the racing that's difficult you know the <laughs> it's very very difficult mentally because you have to be really really strong as a competitor you know it's it's um, <laughs> when i was car racing it was more 60 70 percent was all mental you know you would do things to try and out <laughs> outclass your competitor even before you sat in the go-kart and it still carries up to this level but the hardest thing now is is the financial aspect which is where something I struggle sometimes because you know you, you've got a lot of people that you've got to look after you know uh, you've got to keep everybody happy you've got multiple sponsors all want the same thing and there's only one there's only one of me you know um, uh, but yeah I think you know as you said all the drivers we put on a brave face you know you have to because at the end of the day we're all doing it because we want to do it but there are there are a lot of challenges to being here yeah um the issue about getting sponsorship now like that has got to be one of the major headaches and stress factors and in, in in becoming a driver in every level oh 100 percent. i mean you know for me uh, there's a little bit of a backstory you know we we my last season of Toka was actually back in 2008 before I came back to Clio Cup and we had to have eight years away because we just couldn't raise the money you know and I, I tried everything and it was very very difficult very stressful uh, you know we went all over the world literally you know we went to China Asia Singapore well that is in Asia but you know US as well um, just trying to raise the capital needed and nothing really worked so you end up getting to the position where you go do you know what it's, it's, this, is, this isn't going to work for me so I think in about 2013, I'd made the mental decision of, mm, no, you know, I'll, we've not raced for five, six years now. It's not going to happen. And then I, I don't know what it was. My, my now wife, she's my girlfriend then, Sadie, we brought our first house. And it was about six months into that. I thought, no, I've got to give this another go. But I then was able to combine everything I'd learned over those previous years of failing, failing, failing to come up with a commercial platform, which has led me to BTCC. But it's very very difficult you know because I use the word sponsors before and you've just used the word sponsors but really that's the wrong word they're not sponsors at all anymore you know because it that doesn't sit with accountants very well you know they're all commercial partners and you've got to have a commercial strategy behind each deal um, and you know for me that are working we're working with multiple commercial partners and um, you know we, we everyone's got their own agenda you know so obviously my my, my title partner cataclean they get 99 percent of my time but then everyone else wants 100 percent of the one percent that's you know so it, it's managing is, is very difficult you come to a racetrack driving you're on a high i've heard someone describe it as being like uh like the honeymoon stage and then when you pack up and go home you head back to the reality what could you summarize how that works and how you deal with it it's very very difficult um, I'm very fortunate I've got a fantastic wife I've got a brilliant Labrador and then when I get home unpack the caravan you know the drive home is always difficult especially if it's been a bad weekend it's like oh my god I just want to get home I just want to get home I just want to get home um, but I've got fantastic support I've got a fantastic family so I can sort of get in close the door dog will give me a kiss and I can kind of just relax then for for a few hours and then obviously you wake up in the night and you get you replay in the weekend and it that happens for, for me for a period of days and you know so you almost continue to debrief yourself for for me probably the week after a, a race event um, and actually this year it's gone up a level you know we're now in BTCC this is a lot more serious there's a lot more money involved uh, there's a lot more at stake so yeah that you're right it, it is a honeymoon period the race weekends and I, I keep saying this to people this is the easy bit you know the easy bit is being here the easy bit is driving the car whether the results are good bad or indifferent 
that's easy the difficult bit is the management in the week then you know uh, some drivers have have a management team to help them I've never actually been able to find anybody that that I found suitable or trustworthy so I, I do it all myself but <laughs> it's difficult it's very difficult um, it's a question we keep asking we're asking people during the series um, are you aware of any support system in place within racing in general um, for drivers who are who are struggling and who who are who, don't, who can't or won't or don't want to speak out to be honest I'm not actually you know and, and, and uh, unfortunately in our sport I think because of the way it's developed and because of the money that's involved ooh, over the last 25 years there's been a lot of what I call family money propping the industry up because there's had to be you know we've had a couple of recessions and all sorts of stuff so um, uh, I think the problem is is motorsport is is a professional sport that's born from an amateur level if that makes sense you know so motorsport started back in the days when they just thought it'd be great to go and race a Bentley yeah. you know yeah. which required money because the very fact that you had a Bentley meant you had some money so I don't think it's really changed a lot um, and the commercial side of it now especially for drivers like myself that bring all the money in through through commercial activities it's very difficult and the, I'm not aware of anywhere but it would be a fantastic place you know because it's you know I know a lot of drivers suffer mentally you know I, I'm, I'm very fortunate I am quite headstrong and I have got the ability to flick it off at some point but the time sometimes that could be a week later some you know it, it is difficult it's hard and if there was such a such a place yeah, I'd be really interested to find out yeah that ability as you say to flick it off that has got to be one of the key things surely for in any field but especially in this where you got the such highs and then such lows yeah I think so I think the biggest problem is is uh, everybody's obviously very tense anyway because whether you've paid for this out of your own pocket or you've paid for it with someone else's money it's a hell of a lot of money so whenever money's involved in anything whether it's motorsport a business deal football things become elevated and stress levels get higher so um for me i've always had this ability you know when i started karting when i was eight years old i've always been very headstrong and you know i can get to a point and go well that's it i'm i can close that book I can close that chapter um, and I think the most important thing that enables me to do that is I just don't really care what other people, you know, I'm focused on what I'm doing. I'm not too worried about what other people think. You know, uh, when we did our tourist car announcement, for example, back in October or November, November, I think, um, there was loads of flack on Facebook. Oh, there's another rich kid buying the seat. I'm thinking, if only you knew. <laughs> but, you know, so, but you get, however you do it, you get stick and people, people don't like it. People are jealous. People aren't jealous. You know, but you've just got to look there's always more good than there's bad there's always more good than there's bad and the amount of support i've had has been overwhelming the amount of, amount of support my sponsors have received has been fantastic you know and you i think you've just got to look look you know people will always put the bad first and then the good you know you, you go and buy a new car you want to go and look at some car reviews you'll only ever find negative reviews you'll never find a bad review online so you just have to yeah you have to realize what's important in life and, and i think actually having time away from motorsport has actually helped me mentally now because you know there is a life away yes this is fantastic and this is what i want to do but at the end of the day i've you know one of my goals when i started off in motorsport was be to become a british touring car driver i've just ticked that box by being here this year the next level of goal is to be british touring car champion so that's now what i'm seeking but if it didn't happen i've had a hell of a ride and i've got a life away so that's it Okay. Well, just to sum it up, I, I think you just have. It's yes, obviously, motor racing is r vitally important in in people's lives, but it's not the be all and end all, is it? No, the world goes on, doesn't it? And ultimately, you know, uh, I think. I mean, I've seen families destroyed through this sport. You know, even back when we were karting, you know, people were. I mean, my my parents did everything they could financially. You know, I mean, they they, they remortgaged their house stupidly. I wouldn't do it for my kids. I'm telling you now, I wouldn't do it point blank because I've been in that receiving side and I've seen how much people give. And and actually, you know, fortunately, because of the financial models, it's so unobtainable. You know, what what really needs to happen in motorsport, in my honest opinion, is there needs to be some sort of structure and some sort of scheme put in place that actually educates young drivers 
on the way motorsport needs to be approached you know because ultimately it doesn't matter how good you are if you ain't got no money you are not going motor racing so there needs to be a much more uh, money I think invested and spent in educating drivers on how to be commercially astute because then that takes a lot of the issues away that we just said mum and dad's losing their house families getting split up etc etc so you know it, it, you've just got to you've got to enjoy what you do while you do it but ultimately the world will still go on whether you're doing it or not and on that note I want to say thank you